Hi there, my name is Carl Conley with Ingram Micro and myself and Rob Fitzgerald of Arcasis Risk Management recently produced three white papers on some of the challenges that organizations are facing with respect to cybersecurity. Cyber criminals are certainly not taking any time off during the pandemic and in fact cyber crime with ransomware and phishing has increased exponentially. I'm joined today by three distinguished guests, each of which bring very different perspectives on the market, their expertise, and some of the challenges that they are addressing in their day-to-day -day work. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first question goes to Renee Fernay. Cyber criminals are the scourge of the digital age. How would you describe today's current threat landscape? Oh, good morning, and thank you all for having me. Um, when you think about the threat landscape, we think about all of the things that I think all of us are very familiar with um, as it relates to threats around IoT devices, ransomware, um, those increased and sophisticated um, ransomware attacks that we're receiving, of course, inside a threat and code injection, which we all live with. Um, but two that I think are going to be very prominent for us going forward in the future are post-COVID, the remote worker endpoint security. I think um, that along with um, the, the, the swift move that we are making from, from 5G to Wi-Fi security um, and the vulnerabilities that lie in that handoff, I think are the, the two things that stick out to me more prominently. Um, when it comes to remote worker endpoint security, um, there undoubtedly will be more increased um, data breaches that involve some sort of mobile device or off-prem device, right? When we look at where we are and how swiftly we had to move there, um, given our situation with COVID, it put everyone, even the best of us amongst us from a technology perspective, in the, pers in the position where we had to move quickly, make risk-based decisions, and somewhere in, within those decisions could possibly lie um, a set of increased vulnerabilities for us. Renee, that's a very interesting perspective. Thanks so much. Um, Ian, did you have anything that you wanted to add? I, I think Renee completely nailed the point. Uh, I think endpoint security um, and the proliferation of data and services kind of out beyond the traditional corporate roles. And... In a way, I feel like we're going to be kind of paying for sins of the past. Um, and what I mean by that is, for a long time, many organizations have had this perspective that if I just keep my walls high enough, broad enough, thick enough, I can keep all the bad stuff out and all the good stuff in. And, you know, a lot of us defenders have always kind of looked at that and say, you know, the, this idea of a perimeter is actually just uh, a fallacy anymore. Uh, that the data is out there. Our users are out there. We operate in a global system, right, that extends beyond cyberspace, right? You have people interacting outside of your corporate boundaries. And, you know, we're not necessarily pushing uh, security services out to meet those needs. And so, you know, as all of our organizations have had to rapidly shift to this kind of work from home type scenario, uh, we are rapidly seeing some of the deficiencies that we have in some of our controls and just in terms of, you know, endpoint and, and, and that's beyond uh, antivirus as well, right? That's identity access management, that's data governance, that's all the different things that go into preventing, you know, the breaches that put our, 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 our organizations at risk. Ian, thank you so much for being here. The cybersecurity landscape is incredibly complex and varied. And in the accounts that I work on, I typically see a myriad of different products and services in use at any particular time. What I've also observed is that many of the organizations are in reactive mode versus proactive mode when it comes to security. What are you doing and what would you recommend organizations do to become more proactive versus always being on the defensive when it comes to cybersecurity? Well, so uh, my organization operates in the electric uh, utility sector. Um, you know, we generate, transmit, and distribute electricity to our ratepayers. Um, so in some ways, we're actually, you know, we have regulations that force us into specific patterns, uh, specific behaviors, um, things like that. 
more so than probably some other organizations that maybe just have SOX compliance or HIPAA or, you know, things like that. Um, but I, you know, organizations looking to grow their security portfolio need to really focus on doing the fundamentals, you know, adopt a, a cybersecurity framework uh, in order to help guide that and look at tools that help support those activities. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll hop off my uh, soapbox uh, with this statement. Um, <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, tools are tools. Blinking boxes are not going to come to save us. We need people, and we need to develop people, and we need to take chances on people that, you know, aren't currently in our organization. Because, I mean, if, if those with security experience had all the answers, we wouldn't be having all the issues we're having today. And so clearly something needs to change. And so, I, you know, I encourage all of us to go out there and look to, you know, diversify our teams. Look for people that are not like us, that think differently, that look differently, that, you know, can add, uh, you know, an additional perspective because we're missing things. And we need to be able to tie up those loose ends if we really do want to better secure our environment rather than just buying blinking boxes and, you know, getting cool boxes of swag. Jason, uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, what Ian just said? We try and make sure that we're, we're constantly educating our users on the same, you know, the same and the basics. Um, and then the other part of it is, you know, you know, we, we can have all the security tools that you have and that, that you want. But, hey, uh, you see, you've seen even recently uh, with the ransomware attacks, some people don't even have basic backups. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so... I you, most people don't. Mo yeah, that's most really most scary. organizations don't. Which is real a really scary thought, right? I mean, I'm I'm like, wow, you have like security teams and tools and 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 antivirus and all that stuff, but what are you going to do if you do get hit? Because you're going to get hit eventually. Everyone's going to anyone that says they're, like, they're not going to get hit is you know, just full of it because you know you, you there's there's always a chance <laughs> something somebody's going to plug in something wrong or do the wrong thing, or someone's going to open up a hole somewhere that they didn't mean to. And what are you going to do if you don't have a backup? You're, you're going to have a lot of problems. So, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. Jason, the market has seen a exponential increase in ransomware and phishing and attacks on perhaps some of the most vulnerable who are now working remotely because of the pandemic. What are the challenges that your organization faced in helping support remote workers? And more specifically, how have you gone about helping secure remote workers? So uh, the first challenge we faced when, uh, when, when sending our, our workers home, and it was a really interesting <coughs> challenge, it was teaching them how to work remotely. Like most of our support staff have never worked remotely in their life. And so that was one. Number two was, do you have a computer at home? You know, you'd be surprised how many people just use, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the mobile world. So, you know, you kind of say, oh, how do you not have a computer at home? But then what, do, where do we spend most of our time anyway? It's just on our phones. So, so, uh, we, uh, well, it worked out from interestingly enough, um, in, in, in a rush to get, uh, machines to our, uh, to our support staff, we end up getting Chromebooks. That's all you need to, to get onto Citrix and, and, and work. Um, and then from there, what you also what, what you also realize is, God, I guess I don't really need three monitors and you know and all all you know you know keyboards and mice and like seven cameras and all that kind of stuff. Like you know, people learn to actually work with less um, in, in that case. So. Um, otherwise, you know, we, we make sure, obviously, we're using antivirus, and we even uh, filter the Internet traffic that goes it, it, uh, off the laptops as well. So we have another endpoint agent that, act, that, that we use internally, um, obviously, as well. But when they take their laptops home, they're, we're making sure that their um, Internet traffic is also filtered while, while they're home, wherever they are. So that's a little extra layer of protection there that, that that's that's uh, turned out to be really even me. I was like, what the heck? I can't get to the website. I was like, oh, the agents. <laughs> so so uh, so, yeah. Um, and I, obviously, like, as I mentioned earlier, we um, continuous training backups and backups upon backups never have just one backup source or type of backup. We have multiple layers of backups, whether it's on-prem and to the cloud. So, uh, listen, I'm paranoid. 
as, as, as heck when it comes to, to, uh, to data, you know, data safety recovery. So um, that's, that's how we've been managing it. Now, Rob, as a consultant here in the Boston area, you serve as clients that are both small, medium and large. What's your take on the current threats that they face and how do you go about helping them address those? So, uh, great question. I think there's really two areas that we're helping clients with right now. First is a strategy on um, how to handle incident response. Incidents are increasing. Back attacks are increasing. Ransomware attacks are increasing. Um, Renee and Ian and Jason have all addressed the point that we now have remote workers. Um, and so there's more touch points, more ways for attackers um, to get in, um, whether that be physically or virtually or, or, or whatever. But beyond that, um, I think we need to continue, we need to shift how we are educating our, our workforce and, and build a culture around security awareness. Short little trainings as opposed to one annual training are critical. The second piece is visibility. There is not enough visibility in most networks. Jason mentioned earlier that, uh, that a lot of organizations um, are not backing up or backing up enough uh, properly. The truth is it's more than that. If you can't see it, you can't protect it, you can't fix it. And, and quite frankly, you're no longer compliant for those that are in regulated industries. As we move more and more to the cloud, which I am a big fan of, um, it becomes important to take the same framework policy procedures that you're using on-prem into that environment without necessarily capitalizing on a whole bunch of extra tools that are <laughs> cloud specific or cloud special for security and compliance. Find a single platform or platforms that you can utilize that integrate together to make the work easier. So the weakest link in many organizations tends unfortunately to be the people and it's in part due to lack of education. And many organizations have implemented security awareness trainings. I'd love to get your perspective on the effectiveness of those, the format, and any other thoughts and comments that you had on how your organization perhaps has employed security uh, awareness training. This idea that we send our, our colleagues, right? And, you know, not users, not, you know, or whatever. Like, these are people we work with. Like, this idea that we send our colleagues an email once a month designed to trick them. And then if they fail, then they have to sit through 30 minutes to two hours worth of, you know, online slideshows or whatever is, is a, is an interesting tactic when really the key to security is partnership. So I think it's important for us to evolve, not only how we're teaching them or how we're educating them, but it's, it's the what as well right? And help them understand it more at a human level, at a personal level, because that's where they are operating our businesses from at this point. Yeah, a quick comment uh, to something Rob mentioned earlier that I think is important. Uh, sitting through, you know, a couple hours of security awareness training is is just, just counterproductive. They're, they're not paying attention. They're not going to absorb material. Like, I, I say quick, quick, quick and often, right? Like five, ten really quick minutes of our security awareness training, you know, our, you know, standard one to check the box might be 10 minutes, right? So, but beyond that, it's, it's all about constant communication, just saying uh, to, to, to our employees um, that, you know, this is, this is what's on the landscape and this is what, you know, you should be looking out for. And don't forget, hey, um, when, you, when you receive something from somebody you don't know or you do know, uh, just always take an extra look. And it, it's, those, it's those constant reminders, I think, that are, that, that are huge. So I want to thank each of our participants uh, uh, today. It's been a great dialogue. I certainly have learned a lot. This is a very current topic that everybody is struggling with. So your perspectives have been absolutely phenomenal. And I will say to any of the Ingram Micro partners out there, don't hesitate. Don't give it a second thought. Reach out to your partner development manager and inquire about the security line card that we have and some of the programs that we have in place that can help you stay current and one step ahead of the next cybersecurity threat. Thank you.